Hi everyone, here I go again with another video. I decided to make this video today because I was making a maze for my class. I do use these quite often, so I figured this would be a great one to show everyone how to do it. It's not hard, it is a little bit time consuming as, as everything, but it is actually pretty simple to do. What I also am going to do at the end of this video, I will post this one, which is blank, for you to play around with it and make your own in the description, as well as one that I completed for math um, that's also free. So I completely completed a radical equations one um, for my class and this one will also be free and you can download this one or the background if you want to use it for something different. Um, you'll be able to edit um, the title if you wanted to. So let's go ahead and get started so you can see how easy it is to do. So the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to start with a um, brand new Google Drawings. So if you remember from any of my previous videos, a Google Drawing, what it does is you create your background for your Google Slides so that students can't touch anything that's in the background. You wanna make sure that your background is locked down and my preference to do that is by making my background using Google Drawings. So directly from my drive, I'm just gonna go to New and Google Drawings. Because I want the option to be able to print these mazes if I wanted to, let's say we are not distance learning anymore and we are back in the classroom, I'm going to set this background up to be the size of a sheet of paper. So I'm going to go to File, Page Setup, Custom, and I'm going to make this 11 by 8.5. So 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. It doesn't look like it changed much, but it really does make a difference later when you go and print. You don't want it to get all warped if you were to print it. Go ahead and title it. I'm just going to title it YouTube Testing. And now we're ready to get started. The first thing that I like to do, and I don't think I've ever showed this, and um, it might be something everyone knows, but it might be something you don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and um, right click and change the background. I have been loving doing um, gradient backgrounds, so you can choose all kinds of colors here already, but I'm gonna go ahead and create a custom, and I have been loving making a rainbow. So um, yeah, it's just been um, one of my things lately, and these pastel colors are just amazing. So I'm gonna click one of them, and then go add, and then the next one, and add, and then the next one, and add, and then the next one and add and you get the picture and the next one I'm gonna change this very last one just for the sake of time to this baby bluish and this first one um, let's make it white and then you can change these around notice how this is changing depending on how much of each color you want and I'm gonna change this to be at an angle and okay, now I have a background. Ooh, this one looks prettier than my other one, I think. But it's okay. So you can play around with the gradient and make these beautiful backgrounds um, without really having to do too much work or buying digital paper or anything like that. And now I'm going to go ahead and give myself a title, something nice and nice and big. The one that I created was a radical equations maze. But let's say you were doing a vocabulary maze. Vocabulary maze. Go ahead and make your title nice and big and we can center it you can always change the font here so i don't know if um also you know i have a lot of fonts that um some people might not have these do not come um automatically you do have to download them but if you go to um not download but if you go to more fonts here they have tons and tons and tons of fonts i don't have every single one of them but if you wanted to, you can add all of the ones here. And there's just so, so much more to pick from than the ones that are stocked there already. My favorite one is Love You Like a Sister. So you can go ahead and change that. And now we're going to start creating our maze. And you're going to see how easy it is. And then once 
I just show you quickly how to do that, I will go ahead and show you how to finish it off in a Google um, Sheet and in a Google Slides, and then that will be it because I'm not gonna go through the entire thing because it's super, super repetitive. So we're gonna start off with the shape. I like using the one with the rounded edges, but you don't have to. You can use just a regular rectangle. I'm gonna start off here. Notice how it's baby blue. If you like that color, that's fine. I'm gonna make mine white and I'm gonna give it a nice thick border. I like the three point. If you've seen any of my other videos, I always go for the three point. So I have now, now a nice rectangle. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna copy it. Paste because I want all of them to be exactly the same size. And I'm gonna paste three of them so I have a total of four. Now using my tools here, I'm gonna set the first one where I, in the corner that I want it, and I'm gonna set the last one in the corner that I want it. And then I'm gonna highlight all four of them. Just drag across, go to Arrange, Distribute horizontally. Now they're all evenly spaced horizontally. And then Arrange, Align, Middle and now they're all centered. Once I have those four, I'm gonna go ahead and select them again, hit copy and paste, and now drag all four of them somewhere where I want them, right? So some a nice distance. And I'm gonna paste again, and I'm gonna another nice distance. Notice those blue lines I wish I could, if I scrolled, <laughs> so th these blue lines that pop up here, that shows you that they're the same distance from each other. So I like that placement there. And then I'm going to paste one last time and bring those up here. I'm looking for that placement again. See those blue lines pop up again. Now they're all evenly spaced, but it's too big. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of them and just drag them maybe right there. And that's okay that it changed this one. I'm gonna move it up. So something like this, you can make yours whatever size you want. Again, I'm gonna go back to this one after and I'll share this one with you. Um, but I'm just showing you the process that I take. So now I have all my squares. Now I have to set the little lines that go in the back. And to do that, I'm just gonna use a regular rectangle. And I'm gonna be very not picky with this. Just one large rectangle, black, white, and three points. And I just gotta get a nice, you know, a thickness that I like. And then I'm gonna position this one all the way to the back. So right click on it order, send to back. And I got all my lines. Maybe you can see that red line, it means it's centered. So now it's centered. Now I'm gonna copy this, paste, and do the same here on this one. Maybe there it's centered. You can see the two blue lines at the bottom. Right click, order, send to back. Right, and then I would do it two more times. Now I gotta do, I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna copy and paste it, but I'm going to rotate this to 90 degrees because this is the one that I want here. I'm gonna go all the way across and order, send to back. Now this might be a little too thick, I don't like it. I'm gonna make it a little bit thinner. If this were the one that I was keeping, that's what I would do. And then copy, paste, and then I would do this for all of them. Order, send to back. And now the only ones that take a little bit more time are the diagonal ones. So I would take another shape 
create a rectangle and then I have to just outline it like this white black three point order send to back and then that's it <laughs> so you would just go ahead and paste all of them see how there's I have one going this way one going that way um, if you want knit all of them to be facing the same way you can so it's completely up to you how you do it I just feel like it looks nicer this way but if you wanted all of them to be pointing this way you can do that too and then the last thing that you have to do so this is it for making the maze right you would just make all of your pieces and then you just have to start writing in there so I set a place to start and a place to end but you don't have to start here right you can have your students start here and you can have your students end here if you wanted to right and then you can just make them go around that is completely up to you and it's so versatile you can do it for so many different things and that's what I like to that's what I like to do I like to make a bunch of different ones of these and then um, hand them out as a homework assignment so that is absolutely it so now once you have your background I'm going to show you how easy it is now to create your Google Slides like this one so that students can actually work on them if you didn't want to print them if you wanted to print it and your background was white you can just go ahead and print directly from here and it will print perfectly into an eight and a half by 11 because that's how you made it but if you don't want to print it out and you're already done putting everything in the boxes like you want it so it looks like this you would go to file download PNG so notice how it uh, puts it down here and then I'm going to start just so that I'm doing this from scratch I'm going to start a new Google Slides I'm going to control A to select everything and delete and then I have to set up my background my page setup same exact as the other one we want a sheet of paper so this was 11 by eight and a half inches apply and now we're gonna go to background choose image and we are going to drag this image in there the PNG image and now you have your maze in your slides well how do students color it that's the big idea right the whole thing that you want them to do is to be able to color it so look at how super easy this is so using this tool here that says line if students scroll down here and go to polyline it looks like a little um, cross so I know that my first solution is no solution so they'd have to color this way so if they just trace around their solution click 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 and then they end where they started it creates a box for them that they can now fill out how easy is that you can explain this to a student during a live meeting in like five seconds and now they know how to fill in Google sheet Google sheets and this is a skill that can be so useful for so many different activities not just mazes we do so many things with coloring and then we're trying to figure out how to do that so now let's say that the next answer was this four here all they have to do is again select the polyline and click 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 they just make the square right? and it doesn't matter how perfect that is as long as it shows you what way they meant to go now let's say they're going this way same thing polyline oh, I didn't select it polyline make sure that it has that there and doesn't really matter again how they fill this out as long as they fill it out how super easy is this and then they would just share it back with you and if they mess up if they went the wrong way all they have to do is highlight and erase it so it's super super simple for students to do again this one this radical maze one will be um, free as well so I will link this one down 
below. I will also link this one so that you can change it. You can add your Bitmoji to it, um, whatever you want, and you can change the title. All of these pieces are completely movable. So you have all the say in the world um, if you do want to, even though I do suggest that you try your own, um, maybe a different design of a maze or something like that. Maybe you can do one that isn't um, landscape. Maybe you want one that um, and that's not portrait. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope that you find it useful. And if there's anything that I can do, please leave a comment below. I don't get many of them, so I do answer them all. And uh, thanks again for watching. Bye.